Hey everybody, what's up? <clears throat> this is Jack with Spy Pi Gaming. Um, I kind of wanted to go over a uh, topic that we've covered on this channel before. Hey, get in my way. Anyway, I kind of wanted to go over a topic that we've covered on this channel before. Um, uh, properly leveling a character. Um, only the last time that we covered it it wasn't necessarily a practical way to do so. Um, it was more grinding out, you know, levels, grinding out champion points, if you will. Um, and I've noticed that there's a good amount of there's a good amount of information out there on how to go about leveling a character quickly, which is you know it's good and all. <clears throat> the but most it's it's really a pain in the butt to go and backtrack and I don't know try to catch up on skill points and things like that um, the so I guess my main purpose is in doing this video is uh, giving giving uh, new players and and even honestly existing ones um members of the uh ESO community ways to go about leveling a new character in a way that is practical and will leave you with plenty of skill points cuz cuz we all know that i mean if you if you're not a new player i'll say this chasing down sky shards is it's just, it's, I don't know, it's not fun. And then, on top of that, like going back and having to backtrack and, you know, you get your, le your character level 50 and you've only got the 64 skill points from leveling up to 50 is, it's, it's just, it's not worth it. It's, there's, there's a better way to go about doing it. Um, and that's what we're going to cover today. So I am here on a new character that I have chosen to go with. Uh, this is Jack's Chilling Onslaught. And I'm going to go with, when I was building this character, I wanted a Magical Warden. Uh, I don't know that I don't know that wardens get the recognition necessarily that they deserve, um, and I kind of personally believe that there is a place for uh, a frost DPS. So I'm going to build in that direction with this character. Um, that being said, when you start a new character, there's a few things that you want to go ahead and do. Now, I will say this. Okay. So, those are all saved in the armory system for some reason. Anyhow, um, this is obviously, it's not my main character. Um, if you've been watching if you've seen any of the videos you know this is not I have characters that are max level and so I have the ability to craft gear and things like that so I've got you know on, on this particular character I've got uh, the armor of the seducer set and then I also have the uh, law of Juliano set it's a magica build I realize things have changed with update 33 sets are, you know, they're more, far more hybridized. And I kind of believe that's a, uh, that's true to, uh, the Elder Scrolls franchise as a, on, on, on like a larger scale, I guess is the appropriate way to say that. Um, but so I think, all right, I think this is a good place to start. 
when you're putting your character together, you kind of want to have an idea of, you know, a rough idea. You, you don't maybe not know exactly where you're going with it, but um, have a rough idea of what it is exactly you want to do with the character. So, like, we'll go into the skills tree here. You know, I haven't picked up a lot yet, and there's there's a reason because um, I kind of knew that I wanted to make this video, but so every class comes with you know you get your class trees um it's a good thing to go ahead and grab one from each of the three that your class will start with grab one ability you know put it on your bar because you only start with one bar up to a certain level Let me shrink this down anyhow um and then when you get to as far as your weapons like I said, it's going to be a frost DPS, so, or at least that's what I'm going to shoot for. See if I can make that viable. I, I do believe it's viable. Um, not something that is seen very often or talked about, talked about very often, at least not from the, from what I've seen. Um, uh, but anyway, so the destruction staff skill line, um, you just need to put a destruction staff on and when you start the game, over here inventory when you start the game you get something along the lines of this so when I first started like right after character creation I went ahead and put this on um, I do believe you start with this equipped but I went ahead and put on the uh, destruction staff Let's see here, back to skills. <clears throat> and then you have, you know, you have some choices. And, and there's actually there, you know, if you've been playing, you know, there's a third, there's a third uh, line in the armor, like overall uh, class of skills. There's light armor, medium armor. And then if you're like tanking or something, there's also heavy armor. Or, you know, if you go down the PVP route, heavy armor is a good idea. Um, in certain slots we won't get into all that but when you when you are going through this in your mind you know do I like do I want to be a magic a damage dealer do I want to be a stamina a damage dealer things like that melee ranged whatever um, there's benefits that you get from these different classes or from these different armor types so you want to be leveling that as you go along and I chose um, medium and light armor. You know, I've got uh, some different pieces here. I've got you know medium on the legs and things like that. The bigger, the bigger pieces, legs and chest, or your bigger, bigger slots, you get more armor value out of them. Um, and all you have to do to get these is equip three pieces of either armor type and it will add this you'll pick up the skill lot um, due to the main what's I guess what's referred to as the main quest you also start with soul magic now that's you know it's up to you I do recommend which I'll get to later but I do recommend playing through that part um, yeah anyhow it's I would go through you know just grab grab the first skill in each put put one on each or put put one from each on your bar and then <clears throat> grab your weapon of choice um, you know yes you may change mine later and actually the armory system um, allows a little more flexibility in this because I could have, you know, a magic build like this one and a stamina build on the same character. Um, so it's not, we're not, we're, players are not exactly on the same, same kind of struggle bus that we used to be. Uh, anyhow, so you want to do that. You can find, let's see if I can find the, uh, find the vendor. I'm in Davin's watch, by the way, I'm, 
this character's Evan Ebonheart Pact. Um, let's pull this up because I'm gonna not be able to find it. Okay, those are guild traders. Hmm. This looks bad. I'm on video not knowing what I'm talking about. No, it ain't that. Uh, so, there are actually, let's see here, alchemy. That's another thing you can go ahead and pick up as well is your crafting lines if you want. Um, this is not my main character, so I don't plan on you know, doing a lot of uh, crafting on this character. But, well, let me... Alright, I'm going to put it this way. Instead of running around all over the place. Okay, so... Let's see here. He had your forgotten adventurer's jerkin. It's a chess piece. It's a light chess piece. Um, you just... In the beginning, don't you don't have to worry so much about exactly uh, sets, putting sets together, things like that. There's the game scales much much more um, effectively than it used to. Um, so you know, grab the items, put on you know whatever it is that you think you're going to be using. So like, again, I'll be using light medium armor on this character and just wearing it, you know, as I level up, will le we'll cause the armor lines to level up. Uh, when I get a skill point to do so, I will put a skill point in um, destruction staff and I'll have an ability from that on my bar. And then you also want to pick these up. So, this is the Fighter's Guild. And see, so just by going through this, you get the Fighter's Guild skill line, complete the quest, and then, got crazy there for a second. Let's see here, this should be the Mage's Guild, yep. You want to pick this up as well, and there is going to be one more. <clears throat> uh, I don't know where I'm going there. Yeah, we're just going to jump off here. It'll be all right. This looks terrible, doesn't it? I'm not in Davin's watch often. Anyhow, you want to pick up uh, Mage's Guild and Fighter's Guild. Just go ahead and pick them up. You know, right, right at the beginning of the game. That way, you can be leveling as you go along. Um. Fighter's Guild is going to level up far more uh, simply. You're not going to have to be as as like uh, purposeful with it because you get it will level up from you simply killing uh, certain types of enemies and things like that. And then Mage's Guild. Now we're in the Mage's Guild. Okay. Mage's Guild is a little bit more purposeful um, in leveling it up. But, sorry. So as you can see, what you have now have some guild skill lines. Right? So, that way we can be leveling these up as we go along. And they're, they're, they're good storylines. 
I I would say play them alongside the uh, main quest line. Um, the last one here, and I'm not gonna make you anyone. I'm not gonna make y'all watch uh, as I run across the zone. But the other one that you want to grab is the Undaunted skill line. That way, these are the three um, that you can be leveling as you go along. And you can find these in any of the, you know, the major cities for any of the alliances. So I would slow down, but I'm not going to. Um, all right, so pick up the quest, enter Fungal Grotto 1. Um, now in order to do that, I'm actually going to have to go walk up to the dungeon <clears throat> for any new players. If you're a player that's just creating a new character, then you know you have to go to the dungeon. Um, as I've said though, I'm not going to make y'all watch as I do this. So, Fungal Grotto 1 is all the way over here <clears throat> on the other side of Stone Falls. So, um, I have a quick break in the video and then once I get this done, we'll be back. All right, so literally to come do this quest, all you have to do is walk up to the dungeon. Um, we are now on the other side, all the way on the other side of the map from the city. So, and as you can see, you'll pick up levels and things like that just from, you know, heading, um, traveling across the map, discovering things gives you experience. Um, I did have to kill a couple of things. I leveled up once. You can see that I now have an ability on my bar that I didn't before. So, um, anyhow. So we're going to now go back to Davin's Watch and turn this quest in and pick up the Undaunted skill line. This is basically the last thing um, as, as far as things that you want to do when getting started. I will say this though, um, if you have a mount, it's good to go ahead and start day one um, leveling. Uh, I say leveling, paying to do the training for the mount because it is 60, um, 60 days to max out each uh, stamina, speed, and capacity. Anyhow, all right, let's get this, go ahead and get this turned in. Um, The reason, while this is going on, the reason that I'm recommending this particular uh, way of going about leveling a character over power leveling is because if you just power level, uh, you're going to end up level 50, you're going to have 64 skill points, and if you're a new player, you're not really going to know what's going on because um, this game is very much about this game is very much about like the basics the harder content that exists in this game you have to know the basics you have to understand interrupts you have to understand block you have to understand don't stand here things you know it's things like that and for newer players 
if all you've done is farm dolmens and grind levels, you don't get used to doing those mechanics as you play uh, through, you know, instance content like dungeons and things like that. Um, so this particular one is kind of a, it goes on for a minute. And, all right, let's talk to this guy again. Complete quest. All right. Oh, look at that. Got a level for picking it up. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and claim it. Um, yeah. All right. So level five, you pick up your racial skill line. Go ahead and claim the rewards, future rewards, put my two um, in there. <clears throat> Anyhow. So now we have the Undaunted skill line, which we're not going to worry about. You don't you don't really need to worry about picking up um, skills from this unless you're going about like Blood Altar here is, you know, it's... Um, used by healers, sometimes tanks, things like that. Um, you also have now picked up, we have also now picked up the racial skill line, uh, which these passives you do want to get. Um, anyhow, let's see here. All right, stable. Yep. So at level, 10, I believe. It's been a minute um, since I've leveled up a character. At level 10, the Dungeon Finder, which is currently on this day broken um, due to Zoss is not exactly certain. Um, could be update related, could be hotfix related. Um, Either way, it's the dungeon finder becomes available to you at level 10. So we're, we are currently halfway to the dungeon finder. And so here, the stable master, this is what I was talking about. I have been doing, um, I've had this character setting for about eight days or exactly eight days, I guess. So you have carry capacity, stamina, and speed, and the only way you have access to that is if you have a mount that is assigned. So I've got the Imperial Horse here because I do have the Imperial Race. Um, one of my other characters is a tank, and Imperials are very good for tanking, but that's beside the point. Um, you need a mount, you know, it doesn't, and it doesn't matter which one. It can be any of them. Um, need a mount equipped um, you definitely want to do this because it's 180 days and you might as well just get a jump start on it um, I'm trying to think what else there's also you can buy a mount but <clears throat> unless you have you know another character the likelihood of uh, doing so is not going to be available to you at you know the beginning of the, when you first start playing so now we've picked up let's go back and look at seals all right now we've got our weapon skill line we've got the armor skill lines we're going to use we've picked up fighters guild which as i mentioned before this right here will level up and you can look at the tooltip. Um, destroy Dark Anchors, kill Daedra, undead to increase fighter skill rank. Mage's Guild. You collect special lore books to increase your rank in the Mage's Guild. Um, this is why it's a little more, you know, purposeful. Um, I'm saying that for the benefit of anybody who's new and looking for, you know, some information on what to do in the beginning you know on a character and things like that so if you've been playing obviously you know you know that 
you have to read the lore books that you find late you know spread out across the world um, it does there are some good uh, skills in here mage lights one of them um, that gets passively slotted and some passives in here that go along with it but that'll be for a different video and then you have your undaunted skill line which you improve by you know doing dungeons arenas trial quests um undaunted pledges which is not available until level 45 i want to say um I will say also update 33 has made this much much easier to level up the biggest reason the two biggest reasons very specifically that you want to get this uh, guild skill line are these two passives um, the undaunted command which is activating a synergy restores 2% you know it starts out 2% of max health stamina and magicka um, and undaunted metal which increases max health, max stamina, and max magicka by 1% per type of armor. So heavy, medium, light that you have equipped. We're going to be wearing two different types. So it's going to be 2% at first. Um, those are the things that before you do anything else, go ahead and get those things done. Um... And then to ensure that you have plenty of skill points to do with what you wish, the next recommendation that I have is this. Let's see, you're going to collectible or collections because I think it's going to be the easiest way to show this. Okay, all right. So once you've done once the dungeon finder is available to you and fixed here in the very near future um, once they figure out exactly what's going on with it you, you can still queue dungeons um, you just have to do it the way that pickup groups have been doing trials for a long time um, anyhow once you get all these things done you want to just live in the dungeon finder don't use you know don't don't i don't recommend you know burning experience scrolls things like that yes you will pick them up um you'll get them as leveling rewards and things like that it's not necessary give yourself time you know there's a couple of benefits of doing it this way number one you fill your sticker book um, number two you get a feel for the game you learn the dungeons and just to put things in perspective if you power grind dolmens level 1 to 50 you'll have 64 skill points if you do it this way you will have over 100 skill points because and this is assuming you have access to the dlc dungeons so oops um because you have these you have all your base game dungeons so you get a skill point from here from each of these some of which have two instances so the banished cells there's a banished cells one and two you can you know it doesn't list it here but you can see it by that fact that there are two different monster sets. Um, Wayrest has two different ones. City of Ash, two different ones. And Crypt of Hearts. And what else here? We got Dark Shade 1 and 2. Let's see the other one. Fungal Grotto 1 and 2. So you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, Elden Hollow also has 2, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. So there's another 23 skill points. So now we're up to 87. 
if you complete the quest lines in all of these. And then you have your DLC dungeons. Right? So then you just work your way through these. Some of these, yes, they are more difficult. They are... But nothing is completely out of reach. It's not... You don't have to have... Meta is a myth in this game. Meta is a myth. It's... It just is, and I don't care who says otherwise. I have a character. Um, it's a Templar build that wears just dungeon sets and a monster set. There is no trial gear on the on the character. There will not be any trial gear on the character. So all of the you know best in slot, all that it's it's a myth. I go into dungeons and clean house with it. I'm usually pulling sixty to depending on who I end up grouped with I'm all, I, I pull 60 to 80 percent of the damage in a dungeon and have like I mean all the gear that I wear came out of these dungeons so not even not even you know the extra content it came out of base game stuff so um, anyway I say that to say this it's even though these are the more difficult ones, nothing is out of, you know, nothing's out of reach. That was, you know, March of Sacrifices. Yes, it's difficult content, but that's why I suggest living in these. These will unlock to you, become unlocked for your character as you level up. Play them, pay attention to the mechanics, things like that. Um,. By the time you hit max level and you start really, you know, putting together a character build um, with like five piece sets, things like that, um, you know, I have a, a, a much better idea of how the game works. Um, you will have learned a lot from just playing the content as opposed to, you know, grinding out levels in in uh, dark anchors or or any of the multiple places that you can the, the dolmen farming is the one thing that we covered on this channel it is not the only way to power level um, but this is just a much more it's a far more reasonable way to go about leveling leveling your character at the end you'll have plenty of skill points you'll, play, you'll have Plenty of experience in the game, um, in the content, things like that. Because, and that's important because level is not ever, ever, ever a good indicator of are you good at the game or not, right? I have been on DPS um, characters that are DPS builds that I have. I've been in dungeons, in, in these dungeons, okay, the DLC dungeons, the harder ones like Black Drake Villa, uh, Valkyrie Hold, Bloodroot Forge. Our healer was like 300 CP or something like that, and everyone else was well over a thousand. Um, <clears throat> you know, I just recently got to 1100 myself, 1100 champion points. Um, the lowest level player in the dungeon was you know arguably the best in the group so and I don't I personally don't run normal dungeons all that often uh, I have been since the you know the, the dungeon finder broke but or the activity finder broke but that's out of you know necessity just trying to get the dailies done so anyway I tell that story to say level is not a good indicator of skill in this game so take your time learn the game you know, if you've been playing then this is a good way to make sure that when your character gets to max level You've got a good amount of skill points at your disposal. 
as opposed to just the 64 that you get from level 1 to 50 and then having to go run all over Tamriel collecting sky shards and things like that and yeah and yeah all right, you can do that right you can do that it's not not that huge of an issue um it just is it's not really worth it like if you were gonna do it i would get these you know in craglorn but i just don't i don't recommend it it's and it's just it's just not it, it feels you get to the end of leveling you, you hit level 50 you really start you know figuring out trying to figure out your character and things like that um and if you just powerhouse through it you're gonna miss a bunch and have to go back and get a lot and it's just not it's just straight up not worth it um nobody likes working backwards and you're literally going to be doing that if you just you know scream through the game um like I mentioned, you will kind of have to go out of your way to level this one up a little bit. Now, it's not necessarily out of your way. Like, if you're playing through the game, you'll, you're will you going to pass these books. Just stop and read them. But, you know, overall, this is a much, much better way. Much more efficient way. Let me say that. It's a much more efficient way to level your character. Um, if you're a new player or... It, or like I said, a player that already has a main and you're going to start, you know, hey, my main is a tank. Maybe I want to try healing or maybe I want to have a DPS. Um, I'm on a different class altogether and you've started a new character. It's just more efficient to go about it this way than it is to live in dolmens for you know, fight for a few days and hit level 50 and then have to scramble and get skill points and all kinds of craziness. It's just not, it's not worth it. So, um, that is essentially all I've got. The, you know, now I did say Evan Heart Pact is the alliance that this character is in. Um, all of my characters are actually in Ebon Heart Pact. Everybody has their own you know, taste. But this is, this doing these things are accessible to you in any alliance. Um, you just go to your alliance's major cities, pick up, you know, Mage's Guild, Fighter's Guild, go run to whatever dungeon they want you to run to, things like that. So make sure you do that before you get before you really get going and then like I said just get, get all you need to do is manage to get to level 10 get the uh, dungeon finder unlocked and then just just live in it you know um, and actually you know what that didn't work Hold on. there is another set that goes in here and it is the I can't remember I don't remember what it's called like the overall but the assault and support skill lines come from where's that I usually don't use this and... alright you know what I'm not going to look for it I'm just going to do this alright so in the activity finder Battlegrounds, okay. PvP that's unlocked at level ten. A dungeon finder is unlocked at level ten. Okay. Um, there are some skills in the uh, assault skill line and the support skill line that you may or may not want, depending on what kind of build you're thinking about going for. So at level ten, go ahead. You know, queue up for a battleground. You can also just go into that social hmm. am I missing it 
I'm probably missing it. Oh well. Um, once you get to level 10, you can go into and pick a campaign um, where you go into Cyrodiil and Imperial City and things like that. So um, that's another way that you can go about leveling up the assault and support skill lines. But just out of these two here, live in these, mainly this one. Um, this you'll be doing this the battlegrounds or doing your campaign um, for your assault and support uh, skill trees I did almost forget that so I wanted to make sure that I mentioned that um, <clears throat> you, if, if you go about leveling your character this way when you get to max level, you have plenty of skill points at your disposal. Um, you know, if you need more, it'll be much easier to go, you know, get just a few more. Um, I mentioned the main, what's was referred to as the main storyline earlier. I think you get 11 skill points from playing through it. It's all very simple content. It goes pretty quickly. Um, you know, you can play through that. It's another 11. We were already up to, what, 87 just from base game dungeons and leveling from 1 to 50. You pick up another 11 from the main storyline. It's 98. And then as you play through the DLC dungeons, you know, you get there's, there's, one, there's a skill point in every one of them. Um... You have plenty, and that's kind of... I don't want to make the, the whole game sound like it's all about skill points, but it really does It really does hold your character back. Um, not being able to have passives that, that, that work together with active skills that you're using. Um, and some passives are just good to have, like the un undaunted ones. And you know you get extra stats just for wearing more than one armor type or just one armor type if you go all light armor if you're you know uh magicka sorcerer and you go you decide you're going all light armor which i you know, wouldn't recommend but if that's what your decision is you play how you want that's you know that's you get extra stats just for wearing that armor so it's not you know don't pass it up don't don't limit yourself in such a way where you have to pass on things power leveling will cause you to limit yourself it will also cause you to have to go back and do a ridiculous amount of backtracking to unlock your character's potential and if you're new to the game it's really not like if you saw a video on youtube if you saw our video on youtube power leveling is it's it's really meant for if you want to go like grind out cps and things like that so um it's not worth the it's not worth the hassle of having to go back and and backtrack to get skill points and and so you can actually put a build together it's it's 64 is not enough and you'll find that out very quickly if you take that route you also find out very quickly that you're going to get to a really high level and not know what you're doing um and i don't you know if, if anybody's offended by me saying that sorry but not not sorry really i've been in you know i talked a little bit about the dungeons i've been in dungeons with people who have never been in the dungeon before and there were cp like 1500 1600 they had never been in the dungeon before so had no idea what was going on. It was a holy hot mess. Bad idea, right? So take your time. You know, learn your character. Learn the game. This game is very much different from other MMOs. And when you get to where you're headed with a max level character, you know, you'll have... The knowledge you have the skill points you have everything you need to be successful in this game 
and actually be decent at the game. So, um, anyhow, that is all I have for this particular topic. Um, as I said in the previous video, you know, we're not back to spying myself. We're not exactly back to like full recovery from the f past few months of <laughs> life happening. So, um, but we are, you know, we do want to continue to provide, we do want to continue to provide as much, you know, um, guidance to new players and the and and hopefully you know it's seen as decent um, content to the viewership that we do have already um, new or seasoned players both so um, anyhow that's I know I've said this and then keep rambling but it really is all I have for the video if you liked it and would like to see more Please like and share the video and you know if you don't feel like it's too much of a burden go ahead and hit that bell icon and subscribe or, uh, go ahead and hit subscribe and then make sure your bell icon is on so you get notifications each time we post a new video um, we try to make sure that they are informational even if there's not a point to the video I want to do some pickup group dungeons um, on vet and possibly hard mode to you know show I don't know really just that we enjoy playing the game but with the dungeon finder being kind of messed up right now I figured it's probably better to go ahead and do this one um, because it's something that's been on my mind anyhow that's all I've got and we'll see you guys in the next video.